So a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. We have uh, in the last lecture shown that the maximum likelihood estimate of the transmitted symbol given that the received symbol is Y is obtained as or M hat is this given that actually this is the maximum likelihood estimate so it does not uh, require the any information about the priors but given that all the transmitted symbols are equally likely or so now I have this Now, with this information available, I can write a m hat equals argument a in a argument a in a and y minus a. norm square this. So, this is the ML estimate for simple one dimensional constellations like uh, BPSK, QPSK, 16 PSK this simply reduces to or if I want to write this as an algorithm as an algorithm this reduces to for all a in a calculate Let equals minimum a. index of minimum a. So, this is a very simple logic to implement. Let us implement this in MATLAB. So, I have opened open MATLAB. This is a general PSK constellation and uh, if I try to run this, actually this is written as QAM example, I get this. So, actually we can generate a code book using random values of symbols as well. So, this A or the constellation A can be any set of arbitrary symbols as well. So, I will do that, but let me for now say that or uh, let us work with the PSK, uh, the name is wrong, it is called a QAM example, whereas this is a PSK. So, I will possibly rename it to say or I will keep it as QAM example and add a decoding logic. So, this y equals s plus w and for now I have to do this or rather this needs to be repeated for all symbols in Y. This needs to be repeated for all symbols in Y. So, I will have to write a for loop for y and a 
है D C two equals absolute value of Y C one minus A C two. This calculates the distance and value equals minimum of D and S hat C one because it is the C one th entry. Obviously, a simpler logic can be built for this, but uh, this is the most general form. And this decided wrong. So, value and index. This is run, and s hat is generated. So, let's look at s hat. Actually, let us look at S and S hat simultaneously. Say, so let me call this T equals S and S hat. So, this is T. So, I transmit this. I receive this. I transmit this. I receive this. I transmit this. I receive this. This is uh, almost identical in all the cases. So, I will do this for m equals 8 and I will add this t in the end, t equals s hat and let us make this a column matrix, add a semicolon and run. So, t if you look at it, so you see that uh, these are more or less identical. So, you see that T S and S hat are identical, but uh, if you look at the constellation or if you look at the plots, all the clouds are well separated. Means that uh, this is a very low ambiguity constellation and uh, the probability of mistaking one of the symbols as another is quite low. So, these match exactly which is fine. So, now let us say that I increase the noise variance what we were doing earlier. So, now the ambiguity increases. So, let me look at T, but still the ambiguity is not large enough to cause any significant overlap among the clouds and so we see that these two plots match almost still match almost exactly. Say that I repeat this. and we are in trouble. Rather, let me do this for point zero 0.01 first. This is not there, but increase this. Now, there is a large amount of ambiguity and uh, let us see how this affects us. So, if I look at T, match, match, there is a mismatch here. Match, 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 there is a match, but we just saw a mismatch, right? Yeah, there is a mismatch on the 19th symbol. So, there will be mismatches. So, let us say that, let me identify another variable, S and S hat are there. So, V equals S, S hat element wise and double. So, this will give me whether there is a match or a mismatch. So, let me look at V and so you see that V or this is, let me do this 1 minus or not equal to. If I look at V now, this is hard to visualize. So, uh, 
this is hard so let's see see that there are more than a few errors so let me we i converted this to column vector so you see that 10th position there is an error 19th position there is an error 39th position there is an error then there are a few more errors so if i say that out of these 10000 so sum of v v contains in total yeah sorry not 10000 out of 100000 it contains close to 8600 errors or now v contains some errors so let me say that i this and it this has an 8.5 percent probability of error or so let me quantify this so now let me do this and this and copy and generate a handle on this to say that let me call this pe equals this and when i run this so this is essentially the percentage of errors so this is 0.879 i run this again 0.87 run this again 0.886 so it's close to 0.88 or 0.87 i add another zero this will give me a better approximation so i run add another zero run this again so it take some time but 0.87 so this is close to 0.8 i'll run this again just uh, for completeness so it's again 0.871 so it's 0.871 up to three decimal places i'll reduce it reduce the precision slightly and clear all done and now i run this again 0.872 it's only close to 0.87 so now let me reduce the noise say do this it's close to 0 which is expected because there is no overlap say 0.05 let's explore this value so let me look at the plot for plot y see there is overlap in the clouds but uh, this is just a very small overlap so the clouds still intersect but uh, the overlap is very small and uh, close to 1.5% probability of error so we were also talking about quantifying this ambiguity so we now have a handle on the ambiguity that there is within a constellation that is the probability of error so say this is 0.02 if i reduce this so this is 10 to the power minus 4 let me make this 15 this will be close to 1% not close to 10% percent 1618 1.16% so yeah close to 16% so this uh, gives us a fair idea of the probability of error or so we now have with this with implementing this algorithm we now also have ambiguity that is the that is the probability of error so now let us say that we want to measure this uh, as a before we derive something for this let us try to measure the probability of error 
as uh, a function of the noise variance. So, let us say that noise variance me say that I want to measure this for noise variance is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 5. Uh, we will come to a more formal definition of the noise variance later, but let us say we want to measure this for the following noise variances or this and for C0 equals 1 to length noise variances and not equal to variances C0 and everything else proceeds similarly, just that I need to add an end for this for loop. So, that end I will place here and PE C0. This, so and now, so I will run clear all again to just get rid of anything that might cause trouble. So, I get P e as a function of the noise variance. So, plot noise and I see that it is an increasing function of the noise variance or let me say that, let me plot this as get a better handle on this. So, because the probability of error is upper bounded by 1, so this is a better handle or this is a better view. So, it goes from something close to 10 to the power minus 4 to 0 0.5. So, actually let me increase the range of noise variances, say let me add a say 1, 2. We will also add the case where the signal power is smaller than the noise power, this and it goes up to 0.67. So, I will plot this again in the log log scale and you see that this saturates at close to 0.6756. So, if I actually there is an upper bound or 1, 2, 5 and 10, let us do this, let us do all of this. it will saturate to close to 0.75. So, see this saturates at close to 0 0.75 the probability of error. So, this is what it looks like. Now, let me repeat this experiment for another constellation. Say let me use 16 QAM and say legend this and this adds a legend that m equals 8, fine. So, actually let me do this here that I will add two more lines at the end of this. So, this and this, copy these two lines and paste them here and now let me do this for m equals 16 and a quick run. Oh, I need to hold on, sorry I forgot to hold on, so I will hold on. So, I will run this for m equals 16 first then. 
So let me run this for m equals 16 and see this is for m equals 16. Now let me run it for m equals 8. I need to clear all first before the plot is still there so I do not need to change that but I if I clear all this problem will be resolved yes so this you see that uh, m equals to 8 the probability of error starts much later or I will do this for m equals 4. and m equals 2. So, this so the legend would not hold actually the legend would not hold I would have to manually append the legend. So, let us actually get rid of the legend and take this to PowerPoint where I can add the edit this. Go to the plot browser, make the lines slightly thicker. This corresponds to m equals 16. This is one thing, and this, and so let me make the lines slightly thicker as well. Two, and so let me make the line slightly thicker, and I have a new plot, and let me add a grid here, just two, just for completeness. So now. I have a plot so copy this plot and I'll paste this in powerpoint so this slide I copy or corresponding to this I have a plot now oh, so this is X label and I'll also add X label and Y label. Label noise power noise power. and probability of error. So this and I this is the noise power and this is the probability of error. I will actually copy these and paste these here. This is m equal to two. So, this puts thing nicely into perspective. So, this is m equals 2, equals 4, m equals 8 and m 16 for phase shift king. So, this is there. Now, we see that the ambiguity increases as we are increasing the noise powers as well as uh, as the number of constellation points are increasing. So, at the same noise power the same 
noise power more constellation points result in a greater ambiguity and hence a greater probability of error and hence a greater probability of error fine so this is one result that we have so now let us we will move to QAM in a while, but uh, first let us repeat this experiment for PAM because we have done two types of constellations PAM and QAM. So, let us repeat all these experiments very quickly for PAM. So, first let me plot the constellation PAM example. So, let me introduce N naught here. Let me first plot the constellation. So, plot s comma hold on I'm using uh, complex noise with real constellation because uh, that makes the figures look slightly nicer I won't use this plot y comma autofill is not always good this and not I will use that m notation only minus m plus 1 is 2 making these identical let me use same notation this and when I run this and yes I need to add noise so 0 0.2 and I run this make this as M So, uh, I need to, this needs to be over the yes and I will just that and done this. So, this is for two points PM similar clouds m equals 4, so not m, equal, m equals 2. 0 0.1 run this and point 0 .1. same noise levels and get these similar plots So, this is for m equals 2. Now, let me repeat this for m equals 4. Zero point two. I will just close this and m equals 4, 2. I run this. Strangely enough, I still get four separate, well separated clusters at a high noise level. So, let me repeat this, say point 0.1, run this and copy as image. 
paste it here. This then save point two. Sorry, I need to close that. Close this. Run point one. Run. 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 Take on this. Copied this. Pasted this in PowerPoint. This is for eight. And finally, let us repeat this experiment for m equals sixteen. Okay, I need to close this first. This. and this. So, we get this as a copy and paste as an image. This is a big picture, but still. So, essentially the key difference here that we see is that these regions m equals 2, m equals 4, m equals 8, m equals 16. So, all the regions are always very well separated or the probability or the ambiguity in PAM even if increase constellation size the ambiguity is not increasing the ambiguity is not increasing which is strange so let us uh, look at the probability of error plots before we go on to define a formal probability of error so since this is qm and i all i need to do here is change the expression for a and everything else will fall in place because this is for a general QAM constellation. So, this is for a general QAM constellation and if I run this now, m equals, I will start with m equals 2, this runs and so this and let me say that 2, 5, 10, 20 and 50. Let us go all the way up to 50. So, this, this is the probability of, I will close this and now I will plot, run this again. So, this is the probability of error. This goes to 0.4211, which is reasonably large, but it can go up to half. How and why? It, that we will discuss later actually. We will derive an expression for the probability of error and discuss why this can, what are the upper bounds for this. So, I will run this again and actually I'll, let me close this figure and let me run this again for one final time. Four this and let me run this. See that there is only a marginal increase m equals 8. Then probability of error again increases just marginally and 16. there is another marginal increase. So, 
So if I remove the legend and copy this, I'll simply copy this. And, uh, don't worry about frills now. I'll just so we look at m equals two, m equals four, m equals eight, and m equals sorry, m equals eight and m equals purple one is m equals sixteen. Compare this against this plot. So, we see that we observe that actually that the increase in the probability of error with the constellation order is marginal but dramatic in case of PSK. Marginal in case of PM but dramatic in case of PSK. So, why? Why is that? Why is the ambiguity ambiguity corresponding to the Why is that? So, in order to answer that question, let us look at how we actually distance between constellation points comes later. I'll add a few more slides. So, in order to answer that question, let us look at how are we decoding. So, let us look at how are we decoding. So, we decode or we detect the symbol, we map the received symbol to its closest transmitted symbols. We are mapping the received symbol to its closest transmitted symbol and error is said to occur whenever the noise added to a transmitted symbol is large enough to lead the receiver to believe that another symbol a n not equal to a m was transmitted another symbol a m not equal to a n was transmitted. This leads us to define the error event. So, the event or the error event, event given that symbol a m was transmitted is defined as event A minus A A 
नॉट इक्वल टू ए एम और ए हैट एम इक्वल टू ए एम और ए एम इज लॉन्गर दिम्बल closest to a which leads us to define the probability of error probability error s equals am or sn equals am probability of error given that sn equals am equals or pe given am probability that y minus am is greater than y minus am for some an in a an not equal to a this this is the and overall the probability of error can be seen as summation for all am in a this this is the overall probability of error so we now have a working definition of the probability of error in the next lecture we will develop a uh, bound on the probability of error known as the union bound based on this union bound we will try to define how does this ambiguity affect us or we will try to define the performance of a constellation in terms of ambiguity the underlying ambiguity in terms of noise or we will try to define or we will try to quantify the amount of ambiguity in terms of the constellation order as well as the amount of noise plus there is i should say that there is something there is one piece of this puzzle that uh, i have intentionally kept hidden till now in the, just for some dramatic effects so we will reveal that uh, missing piece of the puzzle that why is the ambiguity in pm much smaller as compared to psk there is one piece of the puzzle that uh, i am intentionally not talking about we will reveal that piece of the puzzle and uh, talk about these details in the next lecture where we will talk about the union bound on the probability of error so thank you mm -hmm.